Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a battle group preview for the 3rd Guards Mechanized Core. Please remember this is still in beta and therefore everything is subject to change. So the way I built the 3rd Guards in this one is for a Vanguard deployment type. That means I'm going to be trying to make as much ground as I can in phase A and you guys may have noticed that this is something that I've gone for with quite a few of the Soviet divisions so far and is definitely a playstyle that I specifically prefer. Now this division in particular it is incredibly aggressive and then later on you become more of a support player if you run out of steam in the mid game. But I had a lot of fun playing it so let's jump straight in. So moving into the recon tab, the first card that I have here is the Kaliadushka. Going to be bringing these in phase A, six of them with one star veterancy. And I think these are pretty strong actually. They have armor, so they are immune to light arms fire, whilst also having two machine guns. They've got the Bren mounted in the front and the Dushka mounted on top. And those two machine guns combined can run down enemy infantry that doesn't have AT weapons so really really useful for that role and they only cost 15 points apiece. Then I have a card of the Dozor I'm bringing these in with the Carrier Resvedka. The Carrier Resvedka is similar to the Carrier Dushka except from the machine gun in the front is accompanied by an AT rifle on top. Now the boys anti-tank rifle is only 20 millimeters of penetration so not that fantastic but good for dealing with half tracks in the early game in particular and other light armored vehicles that can be a nuisance. The fact that it's armored does also allow it to harass infantry that doesn't have AT. Then I have the T3476 Razvedka. These are really good to accompany your Shermans in the early game so definitely worth bringing and your only choice is phase A so get as many as you can uh, with no veterancy. Other choices in the recon tab include the Partisan Sniper, Single Sniper, this lady is going to be popping a few heads and I would recommend you bring them on the fastest transport, the WLA motorcycle if you're going to bring her. Then there is the standard motorcycle recon with the machine gun, not too great since it is vulnerable to light arms fire. Then you have the Mot Razvedka which are your four man recon squads. In this particular division there is some interesting choices. You can bring them in with a Bren carrier so bear that in mind but I would rather bring them in the Razvedka M3A1 Razvedka vehicle. Then we have the Razvedka squad. These are actually pretty strong. They do have a bazooka and because they have very good stealth it means that they can hide in places that other larger squads cannot and get some quite good ambushes off with those. So definitely consider bringing these if you find a space in your battle group for them. Now the last card that is available in the recon tab is the Valentine 3. This has the 2 pounder with the 15 round per minute rate of fire which is pretty decent but I would never really prefer these over the T3476s which is why I don't bring them with this battle group. Moving on to the infantry tab and the first card that we have here is half the reason why this division is so fun and it's the partisans. You can bring them in in phase A with no veterancy and you get 12 on a card. There are two cards available so you can get 24 of these 12 man partisan squads which are actually really good for just clogging up the enemy early on and providing a huge presence on the front line for a very cheap cost. Then I have a card of the Sapri, the four-man Sapri squads. I really like these because they come in the Jeep, which is really fast, allows them to get into annoying positions at the start of the game. Then I have a card of the standard Gavardia uh, with the DP, which uh, has the PTRD as well. These guys are useful in the early game with that AT weapon because they clean up light armor vehicles which are present in the early game. Then I have a card of the Partisan Gomroti. These guys are five man squads with three smoke grenades so perfect command squads in my opinion. Then in phase B I've got a card of the Gavardia without the extra machine gun and the lack of an AT rifle. I have a card of the Sapri, which have the two HE 
grenades, which is the reason that they're so good in close quarters combat. They also rely on SVTs, which can still do well at close range alongside the two PPSH. And then finally in phase C, another card of the Gavardia. Both my Gavardia cards in phase B and C are no better at C, so I have the most availability possible throughout the game. Now moving on to the other choices, there is the Partizan DP squads. These are six-man squads. They come with five SVTs and the DP. Now there is a very real opportunity here to bring in all of the Partizans in Phase A as opposed to my choices of the Sapper and Gavardia. So definitely give that a go. I reckon it'd be really fun. But in this case, I'm not choosing to bring these guys. But they, at range could do quite well for you covering the other partisan units that will be charging forwards. Then there's the chance to bring in some Tanko Desa Niki. I really wanted to bring these guys in and it's interesting this card because it only has five availability with one star veterancy and this is a historically accurate thing. It's not a random number and I learned that on my stream which was really cool. So thanks for that information for whoever put that in the chat. But these are nice because you can bring them in with the M2A1 half tracks. So it may be worth bringing them in for that purpose. But with the way that I built the division, they just didn't find a place. Then there's uh, more cards of Gavardia. You actually get three cards in total of the standard Gavardia squads. So bear that in mind. You got the Jeep or not the Jeep, the Motorcycle, sorry, Command. Um, these aren't very good because they get killed so damn easily. Then there's the Avto Comrotti. You bring these guys in if you want, but uh, their low availability really limits them. You only get two with one star veterancy in Phase A. So, yeah, not ideal. Maybe a Phase B choice, you get four of them. And they are like 100 meter range weapons with smoke grenades, so they don't reveal themselves very well. Keep themselves alive with the smoke grenades with that utility. So really, really nice squads if you can get higher availability later on. There's the Avtom and Cheeky squads. These are actually really strong at the moment with their 10 uh, PPSH, but choosing not to bring them because of their limited availability in comparison to the Gavardia. Then there's the choice of the GV Comrati squads. You can get quite a lot of these in Phase A and Phase B, uh, but I'm choosing to take the Partisans in Phase A because there's five men instead of uh, three. Or, yeah, it is three. Yeah, sorry. Um, so that's the reasoning for that. Then there's the Tanko Comrati, which have the AT grenade instead of smoke grenades. And you've also got the Sapri Comrati, which come with the Panzerfaust and some SVTs. I think there will be a lot of different combinations for the infantry tab with this division in particular. Make sure you take your time when you build this for yourself. The fun continues moving into the tank tab as you can see that I've chosen 8 cards of Shermans, two of them being command Shermans. All of these lend these vehicles go into good use. So I've got 4 cards of the Shermans in phase A with no veterancy, followed up by 2 command Shermans. Then I've got a card of the Shermans in Phase B with no veterancy, followed up by more Command Shermans. And then I've got a card of Shermans in Phase C to just continue availability into the mid and late game. Other choices in the tank tab are the Valentines. You've got the Command Valentines and the Valentine 9. Now I think if you were more sensible and you were building like a balanced division, for example, then the Valentines would likely find a place because you will probably need the extra penetration if you're looking to play for the late game or the mid game, I would say. I don't think this division ever does well in the late game. But if you want to continue to be strong a bit more in the mid game, then the Valentine Nines will definitely have to be a choice for that penetration value. But in my case, I've gone all out with the Shermans just for the really strong Phase A and then the continued availability into Phase B and C so that I don't fall off too hard. Now with these Shermans, just make sure that you're using them at close range and not for those long range engagements where they do really suffer. For the support tab of the third guards, things are pretty simple on my end, although there is a cool unit to point out and that is the Omsbun, which you can see in front of you. 
These are a five-man commander squad that has a sniper rifle. So if you place these in a decent position, you could probably make use of that sniper rifle. Just be aware that when they get revealed, they're most likely going to have all hell rain down on them to kill them. So maybe not the best idea to actually use that sniper. But if you want to be cheeky, give it a go. The only other card that I have in my support tab is a card of supply. You're going to need supply to potentially fix your tanks, uh, but also to provide extra ammunition to any artillery that you have or just any unit in general. Uh, so supply is always important to have. I did do a battle group preview where I didn't have supply. That was a mistake and I did mention that in the video. And I think I did actually edit the division so the battle group code had one just in case people didn't realize. Um, but yeah, supply is important. Make sure you have at least one card. I would always recommend that at least. Other choices in the support tab include the Ognemachiki, which are the two-man flamethrower squads. Bring them in with the jeeps because they are nice and fast. Then there's the Partisans with the 50mm mortar. You actually get eight of them in phase A. This could be a very good way of uh, dominating the infantry engagement early on. Then there's the SG-43, which has the 1,200m range on its machine gun. But then there's also the MG42 available in the support tab with the Partisans with the 1,500 meter range. And you can get five of those in phase A. So imagine you bring the 50 millimeter mortars, the MG42s, and all of the Partisan cards in the infantry tab. You could have a lot of fun with the infantry game in the early. There is also, of course, the last two commander units, the M2 combat and the M3A1 combat. Over to the anti-tank tab, and the first card that I have here is the Panzerstrex in Phase A. I have played around with bringing Panzerstrex in Phase B, but I find I can never get them to where I want them to be. So basically I've started to bring them in now in Phase A, where I can deploy them at the start and get them into those really annoying ambushing positions straight off the bat. So four of them coming in with the really fast Jeep, to do just that. Also in phase A I have two cards of the 45mm AT guns. I'd recommend you bring these in with the Jeeps as opposed to the ZIS-42 which I currently have matched up in this division. We could quickly actually change that just so that when I copy the code for you guys it is correct. We'll just add those back in. And then in phase B, I have two cards of the ZIS 2s. These come with the Stuttbecker. And those provide the APCR shell. So this is where the support supply will come in handy. Because you can stick a supply vehicle next to an AT gun that has decent APCR shells like this one. And really do a lot of damage to enemy tanks with the 185 millimeters of penetration. Other choices in the anti-tank tab are the Partisans with the PTRD, which is your standard 35mm of penetration. Then there's the PTRS-41. The difference between the two, by the way, is accuracy and rate of fire. The PTRD has more accuracy but less rate of fire, and the PTRS has less accuracy but better rate of fire. Then the ZIS-3 is here as well, with its APCR shells at 135mm of penetration. But the reason I never bring the ZIS-3 is, and you may have noticed this, is because I prefer my AT guns to be specialised towards AT, whereas the ZIS-3 is more of a multi-role AT gun, which has indirect fire with its HG rounds. Then there's the SU-85 available, which can be used to help you with armor and because they are self-propelled they are maneuverable so it's not like as this too you leave it in a place for pretty much most of the match the su-85 can actually move about and find those ambushing shots potentially but i really don't like this tank because it only has five round per minute rate of fire which lets it down a lot the main thing here is just be smart with the placement of your at guns especially in the mid to late game and therefore you make it as difficult as possible for your opponent to come back after your hard hitting early game. 
Next up we have the anti-air and things are pretty simple here as well. I have a card of the M17s coming in in Phase A. Phase A is your only choice and I'm bringing them in with no veterancy so that I have the maximum availability. Then I have a card of the 37mm AA in Phase B coming in with the Dushka trucks uh, to provide my mid and late game AA. Other choices are the Dushka trucks on their own, the Maxim 4Ms, and there is a second card of 37 mils if you choose to bring them. Moving on, we have the Artillery tab, and this is also pretty simple for me. First of all, I have a card of the 82mm mortars. These are to provide HE support in the early game, but mainly smoke for any tank maneuvers that I'm making with the Shermans. Then in phase B I have a card of the artillerists and these are strictly for supporting my SU-76Ms which can use corrected shot with their radios. So I've got one card of SU-76Ms in phase B with no veterancy and a card in phase C with no veterancy. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that the third guard is really strong early on and then later on if you run out of steam you become a support player. And that's what these SU-76s are all about. That's why I have so many in the late game, because that's what you're going to be buying at that point alongside your AT guns in order to become more of a defensive and supportive player. Other choices in the artillery tab include the VZ VOD command squads. There's the 82mm mortar strapped onto the back of the motorcycle there. You've got the 120mm mortars, which are longer range and do much more damage. Very, very powerful for sure. Then there's the F22 76mm, which I don't see used all that often. Its HE damage of 3 is very, very lackluster. Then there's the Jeep, which comes in with the 152mm off map. Again, lacks a little bit of power, a little bit of oomph that you'd like to have with artillery but can definitely help you pin down infantry. I guess that's probably what it's useful for. Finally we have a vehicle that we haven't seen before, the BM824. Now, this is basically a Katyusha put on an armoured hull and it will have similar effectiveness so it will saturate an area for good suppression and then it may potentially kill a unit with the overwhelming amount of HE. Just make sure that if you're deciding to bring these that you do have a second card of supply on the battle group because I reckon it will get through supply very very quickly just like the Katyushas. And in terms of availability you can only get one in phase A but you can get two in phase B and four in phase C. So if you're playing your battle group in more of a supportive balanced style then these could be a really good choice. Now we're here at the air tab and the first card that I have is the P39N Cobras. You can get two of them in phase A with no veterancy and they come with a lot of firepower. So not only are they good for taking on enemy fighter aircraft and shooting down medium aircraft, even heavy aircraft like bombers, but they're also good for ground attack. They can strafe units and pin them down quite quickly as well with that 37 mil gun in the nose and also the 50 cal support and the 30 cal support. In total that's a decent amount of suppression. In phase B I have the lag 3 series 3-4. I have them with no veterancy so that I get six of them and these are more just to supplement the air in the mid to late game. It's all about just covering the skies whilst my ground forces go to work. I'm not going to rely on my air force for support. If anything, it will be my artillery that does that job. Other choices though in the air tab are the TU-2F, which is a recon aircraft with only rear-facing weapons, so not really my preference. There is a lag 3 with the two 50 kilogram bombs. There's also a lag 3 with the two 100 kilogram bombs. So if you want a bit of extra bang for your buck, these will be the lags to take. And there is, of course, the choice to bring these instead of the fighter lags in phase B 
if you want a bit more of a multi-role fighter but you do definitely sacrifice the agility that you normally get on the main fighter unit. There's also IL-4s with two 500 kilogram bombs again if you need a bit more bang for your buck these are probably what I'd recommend because they're a lot harder to shoot down than a fighter bomber. There is a lag 3 that comes in with napalm bombs quite a lot of napalm bombs actually 28 but napalm from the sky has limited effectiveness at the moment I feel so I wouldn't recommend them for their price. There's also an IL-4 available with the 1000 kilogram bomb but due to their lack of availability compared to the two with the 500 kilogram bombs I'd probably stay away from this choice. Finally there is a card of the P39Q15 Cobras which have the six 132mm frag rockets. But these rockets are very lacklustre in their effectiveness, but I guess the only benefit is it gives you another Cobra with substantial firepower in its guns. It does, however, lack the good optics and agility that the standard fighter variant has. So that's the air tab, and as I mentioned before, it's all about just protecting the skies, not necessarily using the skies to my advantage. Quickly going through the defences, it's pretty much same as usual. We have a card of the barbed wire, we have a card of the trenches, we've got two cards of the MGs, the bunker maxims in this case, and then two cards of the AT guns, the 45 mils in those bunkers with the 100 millimeters of penetration. Currently it has the pack 38 card that will likely be changed. And that's your lot. So hopefully going through that really helps you understand the way in which this battle group is currently built. You've got all of the Shermans and your infantry in phase A to help you really push hard, accompanied by those recon vehicles. And then moving into phase B, you're more just slowing yourself down. You're consolidating your ground. You bring in those AT guns. You start bringing in some artillery and just kind of bog down your opponent and you continue to do that in phase C with the Sherman AT cards and artillery cards meanwhile just using your fighters to keep the skies clear of enemy attack aircraft. If you want to see me play this battle group in particular make sure to go check out my partisan charge video. I will of course leave the battle group code in the description as always but in the meantime, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.